my, the magic of the semitone. It sounds like I'm trying to make something rather boring, very exciting by coming up with a great name for it, but this is actually magic, truly and fully. So please stick with me on this one. I got a, a couple of questions about where the course is. Where do I buy this amazing course on music theory? But this is all free. This is the course. So just follow along in the vid videos and you'll have the full uh, length of this course. Um, the reason why it's free be is because I struggled with this. When I looked into music theory, it was like I started in the middle of everything. So people just went, okay, this is, these are the notes, and this, these, this is a scale, and these are the chords that are derived from the scale. This is a minor flat uh, seventh, uh, whatever. Uh, and, and it was like, what, 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 stop, stop. Who, 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 di who, who came up with this? What is this? You know, and the first question that came into my mind is, how did we decide on these semitones? Because if you look at the basic fabric of melody, or the scales, or everything we do in, on, on the whole globe, which is a cross culture, cross everything. We all decided that it's a really cool thing to have this distance in between the, the the smallest distance in between the notes. So we all work with what you could call the chromatic scale, which is just 12 notes before you hit the double amount of oscillation. So I should say that if you have a low note, that's just a string or any uh, physical thing vibrating back and forth, pushing the air with a certain amount of oscillations per second. And if you have a low note, you have a slow uh, vibrating string, a low amount of oscillations per second. If you have a high note, you have a lot of oscillations per second. And so you can count these oscillations. If you do a shot, you know, uh, slow-mo of the strings, you can see them vibrate back and forth. And the amount of oscillations is... Uh, hertz or the frequency with which the, the note is uh, vibrating or coming out, so to speak. I'm not an expert on that, but the basis of this is that for some reason, we human beings really like the distance, the increase of the amount of oscillations to be a semitone. So be, if we had no frets on the guitar, we could just go, you know, we could just increase the noise and then we could play music like that. But that doesn't make sense to us. What does make sense to us is to have this exact amount of space in between uh, the notes. So we kind of chop it up. Instead of having we have and we like that little step there, that semitone step, which is just a specific amount of increase in oscillations from note to note. So we chop it up. And from there, we start omitting or leaving out some of the 12 notes, because what this does is, if you have this note, this amount of oscillations that you hear now, and you take that and double it, then you get, you see, it's the same note, but it's higher. And we call that an octave. That's just a name, a sound, I say, octave, and then... People who know music theory know that I'm talking about two notes that has doubled uh, the oscillations or half. I can go down. This has half the amount of oscillations as this note. And therefore, it's the same note, only lower or higher, right? But then we've divided the spaces in between the low A and the high A or the low C or whatever within 12 different steps, which are semitones. So we have... That's 12 notes, and then I get to the same note again, right? So, so imagine you have, right? And then I divide that distance in oscillations in 12 different, exact, exactly 12 different equal steps there, so to go to that octave. And that is our basic chromatic scale. And the, the magic of this is that no one knows why human beings prefer that basic interval to be, and we do that, you know, in, in across the globe. If you have two different cultures that never meet, they both decide that the semitone is just it, man. It's, that's just the thing. It's, the, it's what we like. So the magic is that we're born with all of this. We're born with the preference of the semitone. We all like that. And then different cultures pick out different notes 
So instead of, for example, we're going to look more on that in the next video, but if we have these 12 notes right, if we start playing random melodies using these 12 notes, it sounds a bit like this. And that doesn't seem to make a lot of melodic sense for most people, right? Unless you're into some very advanced jazz and you get used to listening to that sound, then this sounds uh, uh, unpredictable, basically. And so we pick out different notes. We don't use all 12. We say, okay, let's use the first, let's skip the next, and take the next one. And this is what we call a whole tone interval, by the way, but let's not talk about that now. Let's just, let's just take seven out of the 12 notes. Uh, that's our major scale, for instance. And that's just, you know, we, we skip the first, we take the first note, skip the next, do the next there instead. So we omit that second semitone. And then we do the same thing, we omit the next one, and do the next one instead. Now we have something that sounds like a melody, right? And when we start improvising or going around trying to build melodies from th those basic seven notes instead of 12, then it suddenly makes a lot more sense. So now we're making music suddenly, but that doesn't change the fact that I just use the 12 semitones, these little semitone step, steps to build a scale that I liked. And then if you go to different parts of the world, you have different scales to be the, the, the foundation of what we do. And those are different sounds. But common to us all is that we really, really dig the semitone.